This is the PS5 Media Remote. You can use it as a remote for your console apps and also a remote for your TV. I'm going to show you how. The PlayStation 5, besides being excellent for playing games, has also got a suite of media apps. Yes, of course you can use the DualSense to control them, but it can be unintuitive as you have to remember which buttons or triggers control which functions. Nothing beats a dedicated device for watching TV, so Sony have made the PS5 Media Remote. It's a nice compact size, you pick it up, it feels really, really light. Very minimalist in terms of buttons, there's nothing that you don't really need there. The surface on top is a nice smooth plastic, and easy to the touch. Underneath there is a rougher type of surface to it. And this is actually formed by loads of tiny PlayStation shape icons. And you can't really see them without a magnifying glass. It makes it easier to grip underneath so that you're less likely to drop it. The underside has a gentle curve designed for comfort. If you place it on a flat surface and give it a nudge, it will wibble wobble. It's not a big deal, but not everybody will like that. This is how you remove the battery case from the PS5 Media Remote. Pick it up. Underneath, you can see there is a button that says push. Push it in and then push the lid forward. And you can see there, it's come off like that. This is how you put the batteries in. One, two. And this is how you put the cover back on. On the cover, there is a protruded part. Line it up in the groove just there. You're gonna put it in, and then you're gonna slide the cover to the right until you hear a click. There you go. Easy as that. It feels less flimsy, more comfortable to hold. Okay, so this is my PS5, and this is the remote. But it doesn't work automatically out of the box. What you have to do first is pair it with your PS5. And this basically means you have to get them to talk together. So I'm now going to use the DualShock to go to the right menu to help set it up. So first we go to settings. Let's go to settings here. And then accessories. And then in here we go to there is a specific menu, Media Remote. Let's click on Set Up Media Remote. And it says what we have to do is pair them together. So I'm clicking Next. Right, now this is the part where you actually use the remote. What I'm going to do is hold down the PlayStation button and the Options button at the same time until it enters pairing mode. So let's do that. Oh wow, there we go, it was successfully paired. Another function of the remote is that it can be used to control the volume of your TV. That means to turn the volume up, down, and also to turn the power on and off using an infrared signal. Now it doesn't work with all TVs, but it does work with some. The PS5 will try and identify your TV, so the remote can use the correct settings to control it. Here, my TV has been identified, but to check it actually works, you press the volume up button to see if the volume increases on your TV. If it does, that's great. Select it's working and you're finished with setup. In my case, there is no response. My TV doesn't change volume, so I select setup manually. Find the brand of your TV. If it's not listed, enter it in the search box. Mine's an LG, so I select that. Next, hold down the volume up button. The PS5 will cycle through various remote settings. When the correct one is found, the volume on your TV should go up and then you can release the volume up button. I select it's working and the setup is complete. These are the service launch buttons. They are one touch shortcuts for opening the pictured apps, Disney, Netflix, Spotify and YouTube. You can also download other streaming apps and access them from the media menu. So now, when I press the Disney button, it launches the app. Press play to start a program. So let's go into one of my videos. Let's have a quick look. The PlayStation 5 has finally been released. 
Press fast forward to search forward. Press fast rewind to search backwards. Use the enter button to select. Use the directional buttons to move around the menus. Okay, and this is our back button. We'll press that to come out. If you have a standard model PS5, the remote also works with playback of Blu-rays. There isn't an eject button on the remote, so you have to go to the menu to eject a disc. So I'll press the plus button, and you can see on the TV, the volume on the right, you can see it's going up or down, like so. I can mute it, and see that on the middle right, and we turn the TV off. The PlayStation button is the most important button because you use it to get back to the home screen. And the natural location I would think would be right here where my thumb is, in the middle of the crosshair. And unfortunately it's at the bottom so it kind of means you have to stretch like that. I mean it's not the end of the world but it's, it's not the best location. I definitely think it would have been better placed right in the middle. But besides that, the rest of it is very comfortable to hold very easy to use. Things to be aware of. It has an inbuilt microphone, but you can't use it to do a voice search with YouTube. The documentation says it's reserved for future use, which may be for the rumored AI assistant. The four media shortcut buttons are really handy for jumping straight into the labeled streaming services. But if you do have a different favorite, the buttons can't currently be reassigned. So overall, the media remote is not an essential extra for your PS5, but if you listen to a lot of music or watch a lot of streaming, what it does do is make controlling your media more convenient and a much more seamless, enjoyable experience. If you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. Cheers.